Making it to Wednesday is a win in itself, and Dunkin' thinks you deserve a reward. That's why every Wednesday, now through December, Dunkin' Rewards members get a free donut with drink purchase. So whether you like your midweek pick-me-ups oozing with chocolate or filled with jelly, it's on us, because you deserve it. Save time and order ahead on the app with Dunkin' Rewards. Not a member? Join today. America runs on Dunkin'. Limit one classic donut per member per Wednesday. Terms and exclusions may apply. Participation may vary. Offer ends 12-27-2023. Okay, you're, you're aware that you're Matt Walsh in this Of course, metaphor. yeah, no, I'm okay. obviously Matt right. Walsh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to know that wherever you are, if it's late enough at night, Keith is doing this right now to me on a phone, just being like, okay, but like, that's what that word means. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. Are you eating soup? Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you keep using that word, but I don't think it means what you think it means. Exactly. Yeah. Inconceivable. <laughs> Movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by the Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? Fantastic, Heath. We've reached, here we are, at the top of the mountain of comedy. There is no coming down from here. <laughs> Yeah, we got something special this time. All right. We also have first time guest maskist and certified rat tickler, Trinity Pixie. Trinity is a queer and disability activist who studied cognitive science at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute and has contributed to employee education at the Mayo Clinic. Trinity, welcome to the show. Thanks. It's great to be here. I do have to say, not as fun and much fun as I usually have being a masochist. I didn't even get to limp away with pretty bruises. Uh, it's true. It's true. Is that really quick emotional bruises. Certified rat tickler. What is that? <laughs> yeah, take us there. It's actually a, uh, you can do this online. You know, it, it helps if you have your own rats to follow along. I do. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> But it's actually uh, a course that was put together by Purdue University uh, to tickle rats in a laboratory setting. Sure. For like NASA stuff? <laughs> or for general for, research. The, um, sure. so the, and the, the, world the, hunger? Yeah. That, well, we, well, basically it helps normalize research because it helps lower rat stress levels and uh, acclimate them to human handling and stuff like that. Oh, really? Yeah. No. You know how like someone comes in and they inject AIDS into your brother and then you don't get AIDS, but, they <laughs> but then they're like, so you're like... And you're you're like, pretty chill. <laughs> you're pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. It's like that. Yeah. All right. Got it. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> so let's get right into it. Now that we know what a certified rat tickler is, I'm very excited when I saw you put that as like, yeah, you can put that as my uh, my intro that I'm in fact a certified rat tickler from a real <laughs> university. Nice. Yep. Let's do it. Trinity, what are we going to be breaking down today? Well, today we are watching one of the worst philosophical students of our time try to answer one of the great philosophical questions of our time, Matt Walsh's <laughs> What is a Woman? <laughs> That's right. Matt Walsh of The Daily Wire. That's Ben Shapiro's conservative piece of shit website. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the dumbest fucking fights you've ever had on Twitter, but you wish there was the world's most punchable face to watch along with them... <laughs> You will love this movie. Hey, we found the guy who's dumber than Ben Shapiro, everybody. We did it. We did it. We found Whoa! the dumber guy than Ben Shapiro. Yeah, impressive. And is there anything y'all would like to nominate this movie or whatever we want to call it for being the best at being the worst at? Best worst interviewer. Like this entire movie is Matt sure. Walsh tricking people into talking to him and refusing to engage honestly, refusing to acknowledge that his line of questioning is leading at best and often playing gotcha over tiny things and stuff like not getting simple answers to complex <laughs> questions. I love I love that he does gotchas that aren't. He's like convinced that he's in the middle of a gotcha and you see him so excited and then... <laughs> The person just has a re reasonable answer. And he's like, oh, all right. He's also easily the worst man on the street, like interviewer. And and like there's moments in the movie where you actually see him zoning out while he's reacting to his interviewee's answers. Oh, yeah. 
the, the facial shots of him during a few of those moments are the best. I don't know why they kept it. He made the movie and he has like a shot of his perplexed face <laughs> being so confused. Oh, I don't know if you noticed in the notes. I get so upset about the blinking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. About Matt Walsh blinking. Because you can see him thinking blink in his head. He's, oh, wait, dryness. Got to blink again. No, no, it's definitely conscious of it. And like, I, I noticed towards the end of the movie, I think we see more of him when the progressive people are talking versus when the conservative of people are talking because I think it's a genuine like editing trick to me. Oh, to, yeah. To, 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 yeah. Yeah. He's supposed to be like, ooh, yeah. perplexed. Right. But I think what I imagine is that he is just in constant, you know how they found out that like koalas are in constant pain because they're so stupid, right? Like that their brain <laughs> is like literally giving them pain reactions all the time because their bodies are just sort of unable to handle existence based on the like really, really hardcore inbreeding that happened over thousands Did of years. Did not know that. That That's what terrible. I think is happening to Matt Walsh. I think Matt Walsh at some point, I don't know when, I would love to watch enough Matt Walsh to be like, oh, there it was, April 7th, 1992. At some point, Matt Walsh became self-aware, but he can't get out. And so the only way for him to get any relief from the screaming inside his head is to keep his face totally straight. Because I think when he relaxes, he just starts sobbing, right? That must be what's happening. <laughs> and speaking of sobbing, Keith, do you have a best word? Sure do. Best, best, I'm going to say, Jordan motherfucking Peterson is oh, in this movie. Yeah. And what I mean by best, best, it's Jordan Peterson having a fucking weepy meltdown. He shows up. He's already weep yelling the moment yes. he gets into the movie. He gets like... <laughs> He gets like nine seconds in the whole movie, which is made up of like three seconds at a time. And then they have to cut for like medical safety and go yeah. to something else. And then we'll talk about it when in. we get to it. Yeah, it's and so good. He just yells three words. I always have a bit of dissonance when I see Jordan Peterson talking because like the way he gesticulates and the way he's speaking, the way he's like talk yelling, I expect him to be like picking pieces of hedge out of his hair and clothes. Sure, because he's, yeah. He definitely <laughs> like just sprinted to get away from his CIA surveillance detail and has Trying about five to minutes jacket, before, yeah, for sure. before yeah. they're going to get a new lock on him. <laughs> He really continues to look like he's dying from a curse, like a magical Which is curse. Awesome. And it's getting worse and worse. And I and I hope it's working. Seems to be. And I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst core question. Okay, because I just want to get out in front of this one because it's the fucking title of the movie. The entire movie exists because Matt Walsh doesn't know what a definition is. <laughs> Matt Walsh exists because of and on an internet that will turn whether a hot dog is a sandwich into a duel with pistols at dawn. That's important. But that doesn't but... mean that big hot dog has corrupted the meaning of sandwich <laughs> or that people who think that a Pop-Tart is a sandwich are using <laughs> circular definitions. It means words have transitory meanings. It's why there are multiples in the dictionary, Matt. Yeah. So yep. before we dive in, I just wanted to congratulate What is a Woman for being our first god-awful movie where I rejected the premise at the fucking title. <laughs> it's the best. People try to explain to him in the movie a few times about how, like, you know, there's sometimes more than one definition for a thing. And he's just like, two is a hoax. I don't understand you. <laughs> Fuck this. Cut. It's the best. Truly. Yeah. Uh, it, it's like he wants a yes or no question to what color is the sky. Exactly. That's, that's yeah. really yeah. what it comes across. It's, it's an entire movie of that nonsense scenario. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, before we get into all that, I think we're going to need a quick break. And then we'll be back to tell you all about what is a woman? Well, Matt, thanks so much for coming in. Yeah, we really appreciate you being here. No problem. So pull up a chair. Tell us your idea for your movie. Oh, uh, is that what you call that? Call, call what? The, the chair? Yeah, it's just, sorry. Um, chairs have four legs. Yours has like a weird swoopy um, base thing. The, I mean, yeah, it's just a design thing on the chair. Mm, is it? Matt, the, Matt, the movie, the movie. No, <laughs> no, I, honestly, I'd, I'd be a lot more comfortable if we just worked this out first. A chair has four legs. <sighs> Okay, um, Matt, is a dog a chair then? Uh, um, is it made out of wood? Yes, Matt, is a wooden dog a chair? Yes. Oh my God, he's a fucking idiot. Look, look, Matt, 
Nobody cares. No, nobody cares about your own arbitrary definition of chair. You're not a chair expert. Just fucking treat it like a chair and move on with your life. It doesn't matter. I refuse. And if you make me sit in this chair, I will literally say you are raping me. <sighs> okay. Fine. You can stay standing. Um, now, what were you planning for the movie? Basically what I just did with the chair, but for 90 minutes and somehow dumber. Hmm. We'll take it. Yeah, just make sure you dox a child, though. Done and done. Nice. Hup. Hup. Dude, so much harder. Hup. Hey, uh, Phil, what you, what you doing? Oh, hey, Trinity. We were just trying to stay men. You're trying to stay men? <laughs> yeah, um, Matt Walsh says we'll literally become genderless clouds of communism unless we can do 50 knee touches and... <laughs> We cannot do that right now. We can't. Whoops, am I? You know? Yeah. Guys, 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 guys. Matt Walsh is a terrible judge of everything. He's also just terrible. But if you're looking to get in shape, why not try FitBod? What's FitBod? FitBod creates a personalized workout routine that adapts to you and keeps you on track. It takes your goals, fitness level, and even what equipment you have into account so you can keep your regimen fresh and make consistent progress through the new year and beyond. I don't know. Does it actually work? It sure does. I tried the app when they first became a sponsor, and I love how the app works with the equipment I have to work out with and mixes things up so I never get bored. Plus, with FitBod, you'll learn new movements the right way with over a thousand de exercise demonstration videos. All right, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Download FitBod today and get a head start on your fitness resolutions. Get 25% off your subscription and get three free personalized workouts when you go to fitbod.me slash gam. That's 25% off and free personalized workouts at f-i-t-b-o-d dot m-e slash g-a-m. All right, Trinity, thanks. But hey, if you do run into Matt Walsh, you can use your newfound physical fitness prowess to literally. Ha! I don't, I don't think we can put all that in the ad. Well, she does have a point, though. Yeah, absolutely agree, though. And we're back. And we're going to start things off with that sweet, sweet Daily Wire logo. Ooh! Only once before has it graced our screens, and I'm happy to see it again. <laughs> And then we're at, what, Matt Walsh's kid's birthday party, I think. He's got two daughters, two sons. At least one of the daughters is having a birthday. Yeah, I actually looked it up, and, like, he does have twins. Right, right, right. A, a son and a daughter pair are twins. So we're seeing, I guess, in his head, like, oh, there's a girl part of the birthday party and a boy part. The girl part is all pink shit. And right. it's a bunch of girls being like, we love pink stuff. We are cis. USA. It's so stupid. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's, and it's so rapidly just becomes this absolutely just gender segregated party when like, I don't know, like I had younger sisters who were twins, like they, and they were, they got along and even then they would like want their own parties and stuff. So like, if this was already going to be this segregated, why is it one party apart from just. Yeah. A great question. And so the very first words of narration we're going to get in this movie are, being a dad is one of the great privileges of my life. However, it's over the image of Matt Walsh's <laughs> dead shark-like eyes. Yes. So yes. it feels like he's being ironic, right? It feels like he's got that, but he's, like he's, he's about to turn to the camera and go, no, seriously, I fucking hate my family and I wish I had the strength to end it all. But no, no, that's just the way Matt's face will look is a guidance I need for most of the first third of this film. <laughs> his beard is fake, right? That beard is like hovering off his, it's, it can't be, he's juicing or something. It's not real. Yeah. In CGI. If I saw someone with Matt Walsh's face, like just sitting at a bus stop, I would stop and ask if they needed help. I would pull <laughs> over my car and ask them if they needed help. So he, he's going to tell us about this like <laughs> gender segregation idea he has in his head. And he's like, all right, well, I gave my son a BB gun. No idea what to get my daughter, though. I made a movie about this problem in my life. And then we get the title, What is a Woman? Yeah, And like, I can't really make a joke about it, but we do have to acknowledge the fact that he says, 
a gun is about all the emotional support my son needs or yes. something like that. The only emotional support my son needs is a gun. I wrote my notes. I can't write satire about that sentence. That sentence yeah. is satire. <laughs> and this, 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 this isn't a joke, but like, this is exactly why we have like gun violence problems and stuff because we don't give them emotional support. We give them a gun and like, that's your emotional support. You have big emotions. You use the gun. Boys don't have emotions. <laughs> Right, they have exactly. fucking firearms. That's it. That's their emotion. <laughs> mm -hmm. Horrible. So the title card pops up and then we get like a weird little montage of, I guess the idea is other people, like smart people don't understand what a woman is or women in general or that concept. And that includes like Stephen Hawking. And he apparently said something about like, I don't understand women or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> we did get to see Grover absolutely rock a dress. Like. Yeah. Yeah. No, Grover's rocking a dress. And I think that was supposed to be like, look, they're not telling us what's good. Like, look, they're coming after our kids for gender. But they never, they will do that several times throughout the movie without ever saying it. So it'll just be a weird moment like this one where Stephen Hawking's is like, women, am I right? And then Grover's <laughs> in her dress. And it's just like, are you just using the footage that's on your desktop? What's happening, Matt Walsh? <laughs> And is the point like, okay, Isaac Newton never got married. Is gravity real? Like what, <laughs> how, how does this relate to anything? I don't It's not even going after the idea of like the dumb definition concept he has that's in the title, whatever. Unclear. Yeah. So now we're going to watch Matt pretend that he likes to fish and think. And I don't know which I believe less, honestly. I don't know which of those he's faking more. Right. He says, I'm not very good at fishing. And you can see that because his cast is literally three. In he like cast directly down into the water in front of him. Yeah. It's also very obvious. Like this man stole his outfit from a Sears catalog. In fact, I think <laughs> you can't tell me that he didn't go into a Sears and start undressing a mannequin while making heavy eye contact with an employee. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and that's, I think, also how he gets all of his outfits. Yeah. Uh, you have to let me buy this. If I if I purchase these, you this is legal. <laughs> I've I have precedent. Also, he hurt himself the moment after the cut when he cast that hook. Hundred percent. Yes. Threw his entire fucking shoulder out. Not the worst athletics he'll attempt in the movie, but close. So now we're gonna meet our very first human being that Matt tricked into this movie, Gert Comfrey, who uses they them pronouns, like them demons that was in the pig. <laughs> I'm really glad you bring up that they, they, they actually bring up their pronouns because Matt doesn't like there's no way that Gert did not like introduce themselves with their pronouns. But Matt Walsh makes sure that we don't get any of that. Yes, he has transphobic chirons in this film. Sure does. So Matt's going to start this interview by literally reading to Gert from their website. And I wrote in my notes as a joke. I really want him to ask what those big words mean. But then he actually That's does. Exactly He's what like, he does. what are those big words? He's mean? like, there's so many big words on your website. I will read them all now. My question is, what? Now, I also want to be very clear that the answers he gets in this section are empathetic and sweet and full of human connection and understanding. And Matt Walsh and his audience cannot fucking stand that. So what they do is they turn the camera to Matt's listening face. And I think what he's going for is skeptical or I'm not sure about that. <laughs> but what he actually looks like is like he's watching someone turn into a werewolf, but doesn't feel like he could bring it up. <laughs> right. Like he's just the only movement on screen for so long is Matt Walsh is blinking. For so long. <laughs> At one point, they actually have the decency to cut back to the person talking. And then they cut back to Matt and his body is leaning so far away from them. I'm afraid he's going to fall out of his chair. Afraid or hoping? Definitely hoping. Yeah. And he's clearly pretty sure this is one of those moments where he's like, I'm doing a gotcha right now. And he's like miming like he's winning at chess or something and like steepling his fingers. And then every answer is just like very reasonable. And he's just like, fuck, I thought I was doing a trap there. And he has to change to a new question. It's the best. Yeah, he has this great moment. It's, it's his first attempt at a gotcha in this interview where he says, how do I know I'm not a woman? And Gert, again, gives this amazing answer where like, hey, when that question is asked with like genuine curiosity, it starts a wonderful journey in people's lives. And he's like, 
me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> like he's got nothing. Matt has nothing to say to I that. I sound like that. Yeah. Right. And again, I just have to point out that the movie, right, this is the first time he says, what is a woman? And Gert, again, you want someone to be humble about the things they don't know, right? But the, sure. this movie's position is, if you cannot answer my weird trick question, my 2,000-year-old Bronze Age book is the answer. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so Matt is downright befuddled by that nice person, so he's headed from Nashville to New York City for some answers. And look, this is fucking amazing because, and this is this is what I love about this, man on the street interviews, right? This style of like stopping randos in Times Square and asking them tricky or hard questions is so that you can get silly answers from those people and make people look stupid, right? It's why you can do things like, oh, let's get H2O out of our water, right? That's the trick. And you do it when you don't have an actual argument to convince people, right? But all the people he stops in New York give perfectly decent they do, answers. Yeah. And it makes me so happy. And he's so mad. It's awesome. He's also like, what if I wanted to be a woman? And they're just like, great, good for you. Yeah, they're like, fine. What are you doing here, man? And he's like, I'm trying to get you to say something God. stupid. And then he stomps over to somebody else. Yeah. are the <laughs> dumbest possible thing. And I have to mention the fit again, just because he does look like a Mormon who's on his youth mission 15 years too late. <laughs> he really does, yeah. No, he, he looks like he poops with the door open just in case he gets called up. Like it's the fucking army reserves. Yeah. And by the way, here's his formula for what he believes to be a gotcha. He's going to ask them something like, what is a woman? And if they don't have like a three word math answer, like the definition of a, a square, he's like, yeah, it's too slow. You're wrong. And that's <laughs> that's him winning. Like, yeah. what is extra medium? Too slow. Everything's big <laughs> or small. I win. Next. Correct. That's the yeah. movie. I, I'm just going to kind of ruin the whole movie here because I, I was on the uh, advisory board for Secular Woman for a long time. And this was a question we actually answered. And we gave a very simple answer. Matt's not going to like it. But we defined woman as anybody who presents herself as a woman or says she is one. And that's really all there is to it. Yeah, and he gets that answer several times in the movie. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't have an answer to it, obviously, for a million reasons, right? And and the counter arguments that he might make to it would be ridiculous because at any moment, the people Matt considers a woman would not fall into the category of woman. We'll talk about that when he gets his quote-unquote answer towards the end. But this is also where we get introduced to his pegboard, this right? He's got best. like a fucking Rico chart of womanhood. <laughs> and I have... A very, very important question. Uh -huh. Because on this Rico chart of womanhood, <laughs> he has a picture of famous drag queen RuPaul. Do we as a podcast think that Matt Walsh thinks RuPaul is a woman? My answer is 1,000% yes. 1,000% yes. Yes, he does. I think RuPaul might even be like the one, like the one person Matt would accept as a trans woman. <laughs> <laughs> We could break, when Matt listens to this podcast, and Matt, we know you are listening, there's nothing that's going to break his heart more than learning his favorite model slash singer is in fact not a woman. <laughs> there's also one other thing that he says during this pegboard scene, which I just have to point out because it's fucking insane. He says, for all of human existence, women were understood to be a certain thing. And I just have to point out that that is nope. wildly untrue. Just wildly untrue. It's not even like, the thing that Matt thinks a woman is, is not even 50 years old. It's like old. brand new for <laughs> as a stupid human thing. Yes, exactly. We, we, th th I don't even think there's been a point in human history where the where, 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 like even one point in human history where the entire world has agreed on what a woman is. No. Let alone all of humanity agreeing for so long. <laughs> right. Yeah. So now we're going to head over to California. He's going to talk to a sex change surgeon. Uh, and it's, he blows this interview in the first sentence. Right He's away. like, so you're a gynecologist and a transgendered dis dirt. And she's like, no, I'm a, I'm just woman. You can use woman. And he's like, I can't. <laughs> I love Marcy. She just takes no shit. Like, oh my God. Dr. Marcy Bowers for the win. Absolutely. God, she's so good. Cause she, like there are people, and we'll talk about the different reactions to Matt of who figure it out. My thought is like, 
Marcy Bowers and Matt sat down. She looked into his empty, dead zombie eyes and she was like, oh, this guy's a bigot. I'm just going to be a doctor who answers his questions with a completely straight face <laughs> and watch him fall out of his chair several times attempting to gotcha me. Yeah, and like, the, and it has to be pointed out again, the way that Matt Walsh like presents everything, talks about, he presents her as a sex change surgeon, which is not a term Marcy Bowers would use for herself. She would use that she, you know, she does gender confirming or gender affirming surgery. She would use language like that. Sex change is considered very outdated and alien. But of course, that's what Matt has to use. Yeah, of course. That would be like a plastic surgeon being like, I'm a nose jobber specifically. I'm a right. uh, specialized in nose jobbing. <laughs> and there's like so much detail here that Matt like doesn't even want to understand, let alone begin like we, you know, talk about vaginoplasty very briefly not even the term we really should be using. We should be using vulvoplasty. That's a whole different thing. The idea that Matt Walsh would know the difference between like a vagina, a subset of a vagina, <laughs> vagina yeah. or like a uterus being a separate thing. He has no idea. No. I really wanted yeah. Marcy to pull down a graph and be like, I tell you what, Matt, if you can point to the vagina on this graph of a <laughs> human woman's body, I will renounce my profession right now. And he's just like gently stroking the edges. <laughs> <laughs> He also has this fucking incredible moment, right? So whenever you talk about trans issues with someone who's being intellectually dishonest, they'll bring up, you know, one of the two arguments, right? The first being uh, trans-abled people and the second being trans-species people, right? And so he brings up the trans-abled people here. He's like, so if I wanted to have my arm cut off, would you do that? And she's like, that's not the surgery I do. What does that have to do with gender? And what's amazing about that answer is that Matt Walsh's answer to that is, well, it's a weird thing that I hate. So that's <laughs> right. that's why I think it's a relevant question. So then, of course, Matt has to hit Marcy with his what is a woman question. And she gives a fantastic answer. Pre pretty much the answer that Trinity gave earlier in the podcast. Yeah. And, and Matt Walsh just sits there basically shitting his pants. Like, if my toddler had that <laughs> facial expression, I'd be like, you pooping, buddy, right? This is That's when we run over and start talking about it. He the starts to, like, malfunction like a robot has, like, an error thing. Because she's just got a very reasonable answer pretty quick. And he's just like, ah. He was absolutely Cut. not prepared for her to just... To, for her not to be the one malfunctioning. Yeah. So I think we've heard enough from the pro-trans side. Now it's time to hear from some anti-trans experts. That's right. We're heading to Aberdeen, Washington to talk to the owner of a Star Wars shop about his opinions about trans experience. Sorry, did, did you say like a gender studies professor at the Star I Wars did, shop? No, no. He oh, uh, Like a doctor a, of something? or mm -mm, No, not a doctor, not a doctor. No, he owns a souvenir shop that sells uh, Star Wars toys. Oh, so old guy. He's an old guy. No, um, yeah, his qualification is he is old enough to have been there when they burned the books. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. yeah. So for those of you who don't know, this guy sucks. By the way, his store is closed. Sucks to suck. <laughs> and he put a transphobic <laughs> sign up in his store because mental illness is severely underdiagnosed in this country. And a local lawmaker came in and was like, hey man, you're a bigot. And he was embarrassed and his store closed. But now Matt Walsh is going to interview him like he's some kind of hero. And because Matt Walsh is vaguely aware that most people start their part of the interview by explaining their expertise, we literally open with this guy being like, I've been selling Star Wars toys for 25 years. Like, we're supposed to be like, okay, so this guy knows his shit. All right, let's really, let's listen up to what he has to say. The Chiron's like, guy, shit. Okay. What I love about this moment, right? Because the, the thing that Matt is trying to do in this moment is even an old coot like Star Wars guys knows what's a woman is and what a woman's not. So when he says... How do you know what a woman is? We'd expect him to give a down home strump and pump an answer. But instead, the guy's like, eh, yeah. <laughs> and I wrote in my notes, really? In your own movie? <laughs> right. And Matt Walsh even like feigns that he cares for a second. He's like, well, what about like other people's feelings? Because the context is this old bigot misgendered a councilwoman in the city of Aberdeen, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And he like refused to correct himself. And so that became the conflict. And that was like, well, what about other people's feelings? Like just, you know, wouldn't you want to call them what they ask to be called? And he's like, I don't care about people. I'm old. Almost exact quote. Yeah. No, like, well, literally almost word for word quote. Yeah. And then <laughs> for, 
for a second. Matt Walsh adds one more thing, and he mentions Jar Jar Binks, because, <laughs> which was amazing. It, like, Matt Walsh doesn't actually say this, but it was basically like, well, if Jar Jar Binks ran for, you know, territory council in the mid-rim of Naboo, would you say council man, council woman? And this old guy's just like, I know about that, but... Fuck you still. I don't, why don't care. Why is this the one thing that I should know, but I don't, right. Matt yeah. Walsh? <laughs> I took fourth grade biology in 1926. They told me penis is the men's. Yep. <laughs> I was there when the Scopes Monkey trial went the way of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> is it just me or could, does that seem like the best place in the shop to have set up that interview? The camera crew had to have been doing yoga to like... There was a nice open space behind where the old guy was sitting. But I, I think they wanted to show him crammed in amongst his junk collection to really get the, uh, you know, the idea of the, the business owner that he is. There's also like Matt Walsh sitting right next to a Han Solo figurine that's like, Which you know, kind of sitting funny. and facing the same direction as him. I think he really wanted It's it. just touching his face <laughs> gently. It's fucking incredible. So with that expertise under our belt, we're going to head to Providence, Rhode Island to talk to Michelle Fossier, a dirty abortionist and gender-bending drugger. <laughs> so this is, again, another expert that Matt tricked into a conversation, and I fucking love Michelle. Michelle does such mm -hmm. a fabulous job in this conversation. Absolutely. Matt's going to start with a trick question right away. He says, so when can a child start gender changing drugs or say they're a different gender, right? Because he wants the doctor to say as young an age as possible so that he can accuse them of giving drugs to like three-year-olds or whatever. But of course, as the doctor points out, kids can start identifying as different genders basically as soon as they can start identifying as a gender at all. And Matt's right. like, Matt's basically grinning at the camera like, do we get that? Can we cut that to make it look like that's what they're <laughs> <Right>. saying? <laughs> So this is when Matt asks what gender affirming care is. And again, she gives this incredible answer. She says she listens to kids really carefully, which is such a wonderful, empathetic thing. But again, Matt thinks it's a gotcha. So he's like, Psh, listening to kids. Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> but this is also the first time he brings up the Santa Claus argument. And I hate the Santa Claus argument. If you've ever had a conversation with someone who's talking about being against gender affirming care, right? The, the argument basically goes, kids are stupid and know nothing about themselves, except for the straight ones and the ones that we confer to Christianity. But the trans kids know nothing about themselves because they believe in Santa. And when he brought this up, I have to admit, I was just genuinely surprised that Matt Walsh doesn't believe in Santa. <laughs> Okay, Matt Walsh believes in God, the Catholic Right, God. exactly. You can't mm. use the Santa Claus argument <laughs> if you're an adult who believes in Catholic God or any God. Sorry, I, no. I also, the Santa Claus argument is also just a bad way to make this argument because he's trying to argue that kids can't distinguish fantasy from reality. But that's not the issue of why kids believe in Santa. They don't, like... We tell them, we create elaborate ruses to tell them that Santa is real. We leave behind physical evidence of the existence of Santa Claus to trick children. Yeah. yeah. It's like Catholic church propaganda, but for kids. Like, again, he believes in God. Santa Claus is like a million times more possible than than the God of the universe. Exactly. Like, yeah. In my notes, I had to start making Matt Walsh's argument for him because like a better version is like... I believed in the Ninja Turtles when I was a child. No one, t that's much better because no one told me the Ninja Turtles were real. Uh, didn't stop me from trying to crawl into every manhole and storm drain I could. Nightmare for my parents. Sure. Yeah. So unfortunately, Michelle gives way too good answers to all of Matt's questions. So now we're going to head to Hollywood to shit on some more man on the street interviews. <laughs> and again, it's so, I, I almost feel empathetic for Matt. Not actually because he fucking sucks, but you almost feel empathetic because again, everyone just nails all these fucking questions, right? Yeah. He is so not prepared for people to answer. Yeah. At one point, he, this woman who, again, she's like half drunk. She's got a fucking margarita in her hand. And he's like, <laughs> well, what if my truth is that you don't exist? And she's like, well, that's that's a truth about me, not a truth about you. And he's like, why aren't anyone stupider <laughs> than me? It's the best. Why? She's like, yeah, Um. so exactly. Then I wouldn't be real to you. 
or would I be? And he's like, wait, what? <laughs> he's so Stop. confused. It's the Can best. you like, turn invisible? You have to tell me, demon. <laughs> like, he's basically just getting, like, you know, a, a Socratic lecture in philosophy from this half-drunk woman on the street. Like, has he never heard of saltism, nihilism, brain in a jar? These are actual questions that, like... You you lost him at has for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you definitely lost him. You lost him at any kind of philosophical uh, the, question. But yeah. <laughs> if there's a hero of this movie, it's this lady who basically might as well cover Matt's eyes and be like, I don't know, Matt, do you still exist? And he's like, Stop, stop, yeah. bring me back. Into nobody. The world. Right. You have it. <laughs> it's the best. And that segment ends with Matt Walsh yelling just to the camera, fuck Hollywood and their word tricks. I don't like it. I was invisible. I might have been gone. I don't know what just happened in a panic and he has to try something else. So uh, Matt's going to do an airplane graphic while he finds a new city and we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back with more What is a Woman? Yeah, yeah, no, I'll, I'll tell Trinity we have to beep it out at the end of the ad. Well, Faye will be disappointed but I think Faye will understand. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm here now. I'll call you back. <laughs> <laughs> what is that smell? Well, hello, Heath. You've got to help us, T. Um, help you? How? What's happening? Well, I I wanted to turbocharge my womanhood so Matt Walsh would actually think I was human. And Eli suggested we put on six simultaneous episodes of Sex in the City. And light-scented candles. And light-scented candles. But it accidentally turned him into a woman instead. If only womanhood weren't subjective to the behaviors Matt views as feminine from the last two decades. If only. Okay, but Matt Walsh is an idiot. There's nothing about womanhood that, that had... Uh, wait, are those Luna Bars? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I'm transforming! Oh, oh no! no. Trey, I'm a lady now. <sighs> Not another one. Hey, if we're the ones who need the toilet seat down, uh, why isn't it our job to do that? I don't know, but I'm mad at anyone who asks. I'll tell you that. Me too. This will show them razzle, frazzle, hootin', tootin', razzle, Hey, Eli, what's with the hearts and cupids and stuff? Yeah, it's November. I, I know that, but these people put up their Christmas decorations earlier and earlier every year. I figure I'll give them a taste of their own medicine with my Valentine's Day display. I mean, maybe they're just excited about the deals available over at Raycon? What deals are available over at Raycon? Okay. Kind of changing it up. I don't know about the point. So it may be too early to start decorating for the holidays, but it's never too early to start your holiday shopping. Why not take care of it now before the crowds and packed calendars make shopping a total nightmare, especially when you can get some of the best deals of the season well before Black Friday. You can shop Raycon products right now and save up to 50% off because their early Black Friday sale is going on now. I don't know, Heath. Have you actually tried and enjoyed their products? I have. I've tried and enjoyed their wireless earbuds so very much. I love the tap controls and their comfortable fit. That's why I, Heath Enright, personally endorse them as a product. And this past year, they expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon Home and Raycon PowerTech. Like their five-star reviewed Magic 180 cable allows you to charge iOS, micro USB, and Type-C devices eight times faster with 100-watt power delivery. And to get everyone in the holiday shopping spirit a bit early... Raycon is currently offering 20% off everything on their site with select products up to 50% off. So beat the crowds and save now. Trust me, you do not want to miss out on Raycon's early Black Friday sale. All right, I'm sold. Where can I check out the sale? Hurry now to buyraycon.com slash gam to get 20 to 50% off site-wide. That's buyraycon.com slash G-A-M to score up to 50% off Raycon products. Byraycon.com slash gam. All right, thanks. I'm confused. Why does your Valentine's display have a bunch of black and white photographs of dead mobsters? Everyone celebrates in their own way, Trinity. Sure, Eli, sure. <laughs> and we're back. So after getting foiled by random people on the street in Los Angeles, Matt Walsh heads to a university to speak with Dr. Patrick Rizanka, a professor of gender studies. Yeah. And th this is, I would say, the moment where Matt is most aware he loses in his own movie. Because at one point, so again, he's doing the same trick questions that he does. You know, what's the difference between gender and sex? And, and again, Dr. Grzanka gives an absolutely fabulous answer about this. 
It's so good. And I'm not making this up podcast listener. They do a blah, 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 Croft's cut edit of the answer God, so, so that the audience doesn't accidentally learn something. I thought any second we were going to see the mouth in slow motion. It was just going to be like, Seriously, he's getting the answer to the movie from an expert, like the perfect answer from an expert. And the movie was like, too long, learning's dumb, boo, nerd. There's Skip. even a moment during this where we see Matt like he zones out, like he does that thing where he's just kind of like starts to look down and he jerks himself up. Like he couldn't even be bothered to listen to this whole answer while he's sitting across no, from the man. Yeah, he might he might as well be like that kid who's told you he's going to come in for extra credit or whatever, but then he just spends the entire time with his head on his desk and you're like, no, you don't get extra credit for that. He's that the human being. Right. But now it's time for my... I, I'm going to go ahead and say my favorite moment in the movie which is where we get to watch Dr. Gazanka be like, oh, this guy's an idiot. And it, it, here's the moment, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So he's like, what if a trans woman has male characteristics? Isn't she male? And Dr. Gazanka gives, again, just an absolutely fabulous answer, which is mm -hmm. when someone tells you who they are, you should believe them, right? Which is just like common decency, so right? You can, yeah. you can explain that to anybody of any belief set and they understand it, right? And he does, the, he says this thing where he's like, but I want the truth. And there's this beautiful, beautiful, because most of the pauses we watch here on God Awful Movies, 430 episodes in, we watch someone pause because they're finding Jesus or regretting their ways or finally accepting themselves as a lamb of the Lord. But this pause where we watch this professor just be like, I should have Googled. I, why didn't I Google? I should have Googled everybody <laughs> in yeah. this room. <laughs> Absolutely. And th that's what Matt Walsh goes for the what if I say I'm black argument? <laughs> oh, yes, so of course. Because he asks this professor, okay, well, what would you say if I say I'm black? Am I? And the professor's like, are you black? <laughs> and Matt Walsh is like, no. And then he's like, well, then you're lying. What the fuck are we doing here? <laughs> It's fantastic. And Matt doesn't understand that he's lost. He's like, but trans people are, oh, they're not lying. Right. Sorry. I became self-aware again and almost fell out of my chair. I'm so yeah. sorry. About that. And, and Matt, he just keeps, he wants the truth. He wants the absolute truth, which is something that can be said in like 10 words or less and is true all the time. There's right. no other definitions. There's no. Yeah, this movie should be called A Few Good Cis Men. It's just, I want the truth constantly. <laughs> He's such yeah. an asshole. Seriously, we're going to spend an entire 90-minute movie about Matt Walsh not knowing the difference between, like, subjective and objective for determinations of things. Like, there are some things yes. that are determined one way and some the other way, and he, he cannot ever understand that. A bunch of people explain. He never gets it. Yeah. Are, are they squares or rectangles, damn it? Yeah, right. Squares or rectangles. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Also, just a little peek behind the curtain for those of you who are interested. We don't argue often, Heath and I, but if you would like to know what it's like when Heath and I argue, <laughs> it's this professor <laughs> and Matt Walsh just desperately trying to get the other person who is half asleep and looking in the other direction <laughs> to admit that what they're saying is nonsense while entering a psychosexual <laughs> fugue state of regret and madness. Okay, you're, you're aware that you're Matt Walsh in this. Of course, metaphor. yeah, no, I'm okay. obviously Matt right. Walsh, yeah. No. <laughs> I just want you to know that wherever you are, if it's late enough at night, Keith is doing this right now to me on a phone, just being like, okay, but like, that's what that word means. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. Are you eating soup? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you keep using that word, but I don't think it means what you think it means. Exactly. Yeah. Inconceivable. <laughs> the other thing that, that kind of starts here in the movie and that, that if you're familiar with the political landscape surrounding trans people and, and this, this argument that comes up with is, is, the sex gender divide. Are gender and sex different? And that's one of the great things that Dr. Grazanka gives an answer that he has a really ex well expounded answer. That's, I think, the answer that gets cross cut, but you know, and it ultimately kind of amounts to kind of, but no, not really. And it's really important to understand that this is not something that's even that important to focus on, especially when we're talking about the human rights and political side of things, because it doesn't matter. This is similar to the idea of sexuality 
And like, we kind of drew this line about being gay is okay if you're born that way. And that's the wrong argument to have because it doesn't hurt anybody. It doesn't, you know, it's, if, if being gay was a choice, it would be no less valid. And, and that, that, you know, that's exactly the sex gender divide argument here. Because ultimately, when it comes down to it, skirt goes spinny doesn't hurt you. Right. There you yeah. go. But the other important thing to point out about trying to use the sex gender divide as your sort of methodology for whether or not someone is deserving of like respect and rights and personhood is that Matt Walsh doesn't like fucking take a blood sample from every cis presenting woman he meets and check their fucking zygote enzymes to make sure like, oh, no, I don't know if you know this, but you actually have a relatively rare genetic deformity. So I've decided you're not a woman to me. Right. So the, the problem is that when you create those categories, even when it's well intentioned, and I think a lot of people who are like not necessarily transphobic do create those categories because they think it's an easier way for them to understand the issue. Right. If it doesn't hold up, it's a bad category to create for yourself, even if the intention is respect, right? Even if you're like, oh, no, I'm differentiating these two things and that's why it's okay in my mind. When that differentiation is overly essentialist and leaves too much margin for error, it's really important to point out that like it's a it's a bad method of finding your way around this conversation, even if you mean it in a good way. Even doctors, like medical professionals, are moving beyond the idea of like having sex in your chart necessarily. They'll have like maybe you're assigned sex at birth, but rather than like having a sex marker and making assumptions based on that, the new thing at like the Mayo Clinic is they have what's called an anatomical inventory, which is literally just a list of the organs you have. And that's so much more useful than making assumptions based off of a sex marker or a gender marker. That makes so much so sense. Even within medicine, we are moving beyond this. Well, and especially when you consider that there are entire clinics that deal with people who have genetic abnormalities that affect their sex, right? So while, while someone listening to this podcast who, who might be well-intentioned might think, well, I don't understand why sex can't be on a chart, right? If you are running a, you know, gender confirmation surgery clinic, or if you're dealing with people who have hormonal or genetic imbalances, right? A sex marker on a chart can be dangerously misleading, right? Which exactly. is why a lot of these large clinics are, are switching over to biological markers, preferred pronouns, assigned sex at birth, right? They're just using a more complicated thing. And if there's anywhere that should have a complicated understanding of sex, it's your doctor. Complicated and comprehensive. Yes, exactly. So now we're going to cut back to Dr. Michelle Fossier. That's the nice lady with the, the purple hair. And I'm going to say Matt whips out a brand new argument here. Okay. One that I had <laughs> never heard before. <laughs> the argument from what is a chicken? Oh, well, no. First he goes for apparently a sperm related argument that we don't really get. It's just a cold open on the two of them across from each other. And she's just saying, no, your sperm don't make you male. That's like the cold. Open yeah. <laughs> so so I, th I think what he's trying to get to is like the how a biologist would identify sex in a species is based on the, the size of the gametes and compared to each other. So like the male, because the sperm is smaller than the egg. And, and, and within biology, a lot of times I believe I could be remembering this incorrectly, but that's what defines the sperm producing, you know, sex as male and the egg producing sex as female. And this is why like, in seahorses, like the males carry the pregnancy and, and why we don't, you know, define the ones who get pregnant as females because of the size, literally just the size of those gametes. And, yes. you know, if you're going to make that argument about what defines sex in humans, what do we do about infertile humans? And, and there's a great moment with this, right? Because because she says sperm doesn't make you male. And he's like, but but really, though? And she says this, again, it's just this beautiful human moment where she just says, you're not listening. And his answer, again, is chickens. Chickens lay eggs. Lady Those chickens are the girls. Only. The girls are chickens and the boys. <laughs> the boys are the other chickens. <laughs> So now we're going to talk to Mark Takano. He's great. And it, I love how he introduces him here. He says, he's like, so you're a member of the LGBT community and you're Asian. And Mark Takano's like, yeah, man. And he's like, cool. Really weird. Cool. You said that. Yes. Asian. Do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah. That? And then from there, Matt Walsh is like, right. No, I just, I want to, I don't know why. 
I like to name races. Anyway, I have a question. Why did I point out your race? What That's is so the e- Equality Act, which you're sponsoring? And Mark Takano's like, okay, so yeah, the Equality Act, it basically says, really simple way to think about it, uh, you can't have cis-only lunch counters. And I'd like to also add that you, Matt Walsh, disagree with that. That's what you disagree with. Yes! That we're doing. And by the way, Matt chimes in right away and he's like, okay, but I talk to ladies who don't want penises at their lunch counters. Right. He's just like, Matt Walsh is just like, you know what? It would make me more comfortable if we discriminated against trans people. And that's the important thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's actually his point. Also, terrifying. question, because I don't spend a lot of time in women's bathrooms. Do women see a lot of genitals in the bathroom? Is there a lot of genital exposure going on in the bathroom? Because I, I can only speak for the men's room. Not a lot of genital... Not a lot of general viewing going on in our particular bathrooms. No, in fact, I would say there's less than the men's bathroom as somebody who has experience in both, given that, you know, the uh, urinating takes place in stalls. Yeah, so you'd you'd think... Turns out back when I had a dick, I never once showed it to a person in a public bathroom. Yeah, Yeah. like I use urinals. There's not a lot of waving it around, though. It's more just go... like Or checking at the door, right? Is that what those guys with the napkins are for, maybe? (laughs) Why does Matt Walsh seem to think people are waving their genitals around in public bathrooms? That's like yeah, the I mean, most important question of the segment for me. Oh, it, I think it's the porn he's been watching. I think, yeah, I think he's just really he's into watching. that. Also, these hypothetical women that Matt definitely knows they're in Canada. That's why you've never met them. What about single sex bathrooms? How long after a penis leaves a bathroom do these women feel comfortable going into it again? Is there is there a penis clen- Like, do they have to smudge with sage? Or if it's three penises in a row, does it become a men's room? What's the system there? <laughs> well, so it depends on how full the moon is. Yeah, oh, obviously. Yeah, yeah, of course. Right. Because, you know, that's like that, biodynamic farming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this has all been going very badly for Matt, obviously. He's lost alone. And then, of course, we have to talk about the end of this interview because Matt gets like three bigot questions in and Mark DeCano is just like, oh, okay, yeah, this interview is over. And he's like, but I just and he's like, no, no, we know what you want to do, man. I'm just going to hear (laughs) <laughs> but what is a woman, Mike? Tell me what a woman is. As he's being forced to leave, he's like, "I just want, I just want to know what what is a woman." And then <laughs> off screen, somebody like who was working with Mark to kind of was in, like uh, an intern for sure. Yeah, was like, "And you're not gonna find out." <laughs> and it's, it's the best. The greatest. It's the fucking best. <laughs> the hero we need. Absolutely. Yes, an Amer- <laughs> Literally, I wrote an American hero in my notes at that moment. Yeah. So now we're going to head to the gayness capital of the world, San Francisco, and we're going to talk to a naked guy. A naked guy. He's wearing a uh, purple handkerchief on his head. I think I'm not 100 percent positive. He might be flagging because like when you're naked, you can't just like walk around with it between your ass sheets. It's just, true. Yeah, no, it's it's hard to do that. <laughs> so so just in case anybody's curious, on the off chance he is flagging, that is a piercing kink. Oh, okay. okay. Good to know. Good to know. If you run into this guy on the streets. Noted. Now, I do want to point out, this naked gentleman is not, to our knowledge, trans. He's just naked. He's just naked in San Francisco living his best life. <sighs> yeah. I don't know why Matt Walsh has included this in his transphobia movie. Wait, is it just because he's like, you know, g- gayness? <laughs> All we get from this is a good point from Naked Guy being like, yeah, there's something called non-sexual nudity. And that's like probably healthy for kids to learn. That's fine. That's fine. I was like, no, there's not. I was hard whenever I bathed my sons. What? I'm Matt Walsh. <laughs> and then he cuts. That's it. Yeah. Then he cuts. Now we're going to go to the Women's March. And I just wanted to say, I just want to say at the outset that if we had gotten to watch Matt Walsh be beaten to death by the literal Women's March, this would be my favorite oh, movie. I th- it got close. It's so stupid how it starts, too. He's like, so I probably need to go where women are to learn about this. Women's March is the only way that can happen. Because, like, Matt Walsh can't find women in his head unless he, like, runs into a giant pack of them like a predator with a herd of gazelles and is, like, forcing them to talk to him for a second. So stupid. 
And he bothers some ladies at one point, literally with a bullhorn. Yeah, right. Because they're like, "You're harassing us," and he's like, "I'm not harassing you." Next exact cut, he has a bullhorn up to someone's head and is like, "What is a woman? I'm yelling through a bullhorn in your ear. I'm not <laughs> harassing you. What's a woman?" That's not an exaggeration. Why doesn't anyone want to engage with my disingenuous line of questioning? Why doesn't everyone stop and talk to me specifically? But then, <laughs> but then the trans is. is they take it too far because in the middle of this parade, someone kind of sort of bumps his shoulder a little. <laughs> and he shows it in fucking he puts it in slow, slow mo. motion. He reacts like Rudy Giuliani getting tapped on the shoulder in a supermarket, pretending he got shot with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, right wing douchebags, bring it in. Bring it in. I know you like to do this victimization thing. I have to remind you. After someone bumps you with the shoulder or slaps you on the hand or, or something like that, you have to not show your team of 90 fucking bodyguards stepping in <laughs> with their Oakley sunglasses to protect you. It really it ruins your image as a tough guy that you brought four security guards to the fucking women's march. But wait, isn't it the women's march? Are, aren't women like, you know, smaller, meeker, and submissive to men? Why does he need bodyguards? Yeah, guards? your shoulders are wider, Matt. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> and the scene literally ends with a big crowd yelling, you're an asshole at Matt Walsh. He keeps it in the fucking, movie. They cut. He kept it in you're the movie. You're an asshole. You're an asshole. It's the best. All right, so... It hasn't been going well for Matt, as we've said. It's um, been going pretty badly. So now he's going to ask what a woman is in tribal Africa. That's right, everyone. Because if you think these answers are wrong, you're racist. God. This part just exists so Matt Walsh could write off a vacation. Yes, absolutely. We watch Matt hilariously. Also, just name the country, you ignorant piece of shit. You're, you're going to Kenya. <laughs> you can't name yes, the country you're going to? He just, he, again, keep in mind that he has been showing us the Indiana Jones-esque airplane graph every time he goes to a place, but when he goes to Kenya, it just shows him going to the continent of Africa. <laughs> so yeah, we watch Matt throw a spear hilariously badly. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, he talks to some people who are at a very different place in their culture about trans ideas, and they don't understand it. But I just want to point out, one, it's incredibly abusive and actually quite racist to use just people of color as like, well, they don't understand it because they're down to earth or whatever the fuck he's trying to prove at this point. Yeah. But I also have to point out that non-binary and trans people have existed throughout culture and history, including a bunch of native cultures, like really, really well-documented native cultures have trans, two-spirit, and non-binary people. So his idea that like salt of the earth, men and women people exist before society comes and mucks them all up with their idea of gender is just like demonstrably historically untrue. Yeah, and like there's every chance that like there are you know, trans or non-binary people in the, the recent history of this particular tribe he's talking to. And it just wasn't, like, it's just not something that they necessarily know or kept track of because it wasn't considered that weird. And, like, just doesn't come up that often. Like, there's, you know, the, 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 their reaction to Matt Walsh badly explaining trans people, I don't think is a fair representation of anything. Right. It's not a fair representation of what they view as people. It's not a fair representation of the argument. It's just it's just because Matt needed to get the full square on his I'm a bad person bingo card in making this movie. So now we're going to interview a detransitioner. And this is someone who was trans in one way and is no longer trans in that way and, and, and can be well with themselves. But it's important that the person we're interviewing in this movie owns and runs a foundation that convinces parents not to accept their trans kids. So as much sympathy as I usually have for people who have had a difficult journey with their gender, we should point out that this person who's sort of using their own story for sympathy for the other side of this argument, uh, they are directly profiting off of people torturing their trans kids. So I'm a lot less empathetic than I usually am. Yeah, this, this I was not happy to see a bunch of Scott Nugent in, in this movie. I wasn't really happy to see a lot of the people in this movie, but the, the, sure. the, this definitely was upsetting. Yeah. So the, the point that Matt Walsh is trying to make is that Nugent says, I regret having any transition surgery. And I was like, okay, most people don't 
I'm pretty sure. So end of movie. Like, right. Yeah. What are we talking about? And I did, I, I Googled it just to check myself. Yeah. Super low number, the regret number, whatever it is. It's very low. Yeah. Significantly lower than nose jobs. There you Significantly go. Significantly lower than dental procedures. Significantly lower than breast enhancement surgeries, right? It is one of the most happy making surgeries that a human being can have, right? So if the argument is your kids are going to regret this, statistically, no, they won't, right? But but the argument that Nugent makes over and over again is that they actually go further and lie about a bunch of studies. They say that all the studies that show kids are helped by surgery have been retracted. That's just a blatant nope. lie. Like that was... I like started to type that into Google and they were like, have you been talking to Scott Nugent? And I was like, yeah, sorry, Google about that. They also, they say something that's really, really sort of horrific. They cite a study that says seven to 10 years after surgery is when trans people are at their most suicidal. And that is not only not true, it is a weird disambiguation of the fact that the less people are accepted by their friends and family, the more likely to be suicidal they are. So it's actually like taking the thing that is terrible about what Nugent is doing it and using an argument for their side. Uh, yeah, and uh, so there's something I, ha I have to talk about here um, that people like Scott Nugent make very hard for trans people to talk. I have a friend who is a trans woman who had a vulva and vaginoplasty who does regret the surgery a great deal. The thing about it is, but she's never going to say she's not trans. She is a woman. And she was essentially forced into having the surgery. She knew beforehand that she didn't want it. But because of the way systems work right now is we force transition and medical transition to be a one size fits all. That's not coming from people who are pro-trans. That's coming from like very transphobic forces that are like, well, if you don't want to have bottom surgery, which is the general term you'll hear trans people use for you know, gender affirming surgery, general reconstructive surgery, then you must not be trans. So she was she was told that if she did not go through with her bottom surgery, her hormones would be taken away from her and she would get a she'd been on hormones for a couple of years, I believe, at that point. And was and like it was such a drastic improvement in her life. She couldn't like to her, you know, being forced to go off of hormones and back on testosterone was was just not a livable situation for her. And so she was forced into having a surgery she didn't want. It was ended pretty badly for her. Kind of, kind of, the surgery didn't go well. She's not happy with her results. She regrets it most days. And it's very difficult for her and any trans people who have these things to talk about because she is in no way saying we shouldn't be doing these surgeries, that we shouldn't be supporting trans people, any of that. Her situation in which she was forced, she was not forced by trans people. She was forced by transphobic forces. And people like Scott then take her story and use it to make their arguments. And, and, and it's, it, it makes it impossible for her to talk about because that's not what she, she wants when she shares this. Yeah, and it's worth pointing out that a lot of the detransitioner argument right, is based on the fact that life is complicated and there are lots of people in the world and that there is no one story of transness. And so using outliers to those stories, people who regret one surgery but remain trans, like you just told the story about, or people who have a different gender identity and so maybe they start out as trans but then become non-binary, they go through different changes in their life, people who are forced by friends and family and societal changes to detransition, even though deep down they believe that, right, these all feed into this sort of detransition narrative, which the numbers just don't hold up with. But that's okay, because we're now going to just lie about uh, puberty blockers, right? So there's a very interesting thing that happens in this section, and you can find it by just Googling puberty blockers. But basically, what Matt is doing here is he is trying to conflate sex change surgery, sex change drugs, which don't exist, and puberty blockers, right, which are harmless and reversible. And there's lots and lots of science. I mean, he keeps saying there's not science about it, but that's just lying. Right. And he also at one point calls Luprin, which is one of the drugs that was used, a chemical castration that we give to pedophiles and people who are dying. And, and I want to point out that is true, but that's like saying we give water to people when they're thirsty and also people drown in it. Right. 
And so this is where we also cut back to blue haired lady. This is where she loses her patience with him, Michelle. And I love this moment because at one point she just says to him, I'm a doctor. And he's like, I have the definition of sex change drugs on my phone. <laughs> and he literally, she's like trying to explain to him, I'm a medical professional. Let me explain to you how he's wrong. And he's just like pulling up sex, the words sex change drugs on his phone. Like it, it's the worst version of like when, you know, I, I'm sure for any doctor, when you're like trying to explain something to a patient, and they're like, well, when MD says I have cancer. Right. And like, right. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. I wrote in my notes at this point. So you disembowel children. I mean, I remove their appendixes. Disembowel Dis children. Disembowel. Say, I'm looking up disembowel. Just give me a second. <laughs> I have it on my yeah. I have this scene from Game of Thrones. <laughs> this is you. All right. Well, I think Matt Walsh needs a quick break to look up another thing on his phone. <laughs> and uh, he's losing his own movie to himself, and that's fun. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Matt Walsh learn what a woman is? Will he get side tackled like most of my vision board says he should? <laughs> Will his beard completely reject his face like a bad organ and fly away entirely? Find out that maybe when we return for the ending full conclusion of what is a woman? Oh man, we're never going to get dates for the prom. Who wants to date losers like us? Well, hey there, kids. Big, Big trans. trans. Hey, kids, having trouble fitting in? Sure are, big trans. Well, why don't you try being trans trenders? Awesome! Amazing! It sure is. When you're trans trending, you can toss away those teen worries of fitting in, and there's nothing cooler. Being trans, <laughs> it comes in 58 radical flavors, like demigirl, androgyny, and gender fluid. It's true. Everyone loves trans people. And several state governments aren't actively trying to kill them. They sure aren't. So slap on a pair of heels, a wig, and tape down the goodies and sign up for Tumblr because being trans is a one-way trip to Awesome Town. Hooray! Being trans. Definitely not hard mode. Big trans is not responsible for permanent bodily changes, destruction of the family, or U.S. political systems. Some exclusions apply and the state of Florida may try to put you on death row. All right, Trinity, that's the last of the sketches. You ready to finish up the podcast? Sure. Uh, what what happened to your guys' foreheads? Oh, these? Yeah, Big Wireless bought some ad space on our foreheads. They sure did. Their ads really are everywhere these days. I wonder why that is. Oh, because of Mint Mobile, of course. What's Mint Mobile? Well, instead of brick and mortar overhead, Mint Mobile is online only. What does that mean for you? A whole lot of savings is what? Because wireless plans from Mint Mobile start at just $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for just $15 a month. 15 bucks a month? What's the catch? No catch. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Plus, you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. All right, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? To get your new wireless plan for just $15 a month, and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash G-A-M. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. All right, well, why don't we take a seat and get started? Uh, we'd prefer not to sit. Uh, sold some ad space on the back end, huh? Sure did. Yep, we did. Yep. Yeah, got it. And we're back. And now Matt Walsh is going to do some... Covert ops, he seems to think. Dive rolls, baby. He, dive rolls. He calls a secret public bigot in Canada to hear about the guy's tragic story of woe. That story, a bigot had a consequence. That's the whole yeah. thing. Oh, no. Yeah. So this took me zero seconds to Google. This dad was instructed by the court to stop misgendering his son to the media because a fucking course that's abuse. And he was like, over mad did batty. And they were like, oh no, you just don't get to see your son anymore. So now, now we're going to try and hear that tragically via cell phone graphic. Ridiculous. They just make up stuff. The actual story is, yeah, what Eli said. And it starts with the kid and the mom consent to hormone treatment. That was their decision. And then the dad tried to veto that. And the court was like, 
No, you lose, no. obviously, <laughs> and stop misgendering your kid. And by the way, this happened in 2018, according to the Matt Walsh story they're presenting here. An appeals court, like I think in 2020, they ruled that it, you know, there's no enforcement about the misgendering. So that, like that even got walked back in the bigot's favor, which sucks. But like that, that all happened well before this movie and they still lied about it. Right, exactly. Also, I just have to talk about how this idiot dad describes gender affirming care. He says, quote, they were going to pump her full of cross-sex hormones within the hour, end quote. And I wrote in my notes, the things you need to not understand about the physical realities of the universe to say that sentence are epic. Right. Like, how old was the kid again? Like 13 uh, to 15 uh, around the area. This yeah. Year. So in all likelihood, just blockers, not actually right, any puberty blockers. <laughs> and like, again, puberty blockers, we know they're safe, fully reversible, anything else. But you know what isn't reversible is not being on puberty blockers. Puberty, right, yeah. Puberty yeah. is really hard to reverse. Yeah, which I love because the dad tells the story as though he had to run down a long hallway to stop an execution rather than just wouldn't stop being a bigot in the media. Right. So now we're going to interview Sarah Stockton. For those of you who watch a lot of god-awful movies with us, you'll know that a popular thing for our abortion films is the reformed abortion doctor. And she's that of trans healthcare. Is this the person who claimed that when two parents disagree about gender affirmation therapy of any kind, the kid has to be trans every single time that's yes. what happens and yeah. it's the yeah. law or All something? All the time, 100% of the time. Yeah, and did you know that the parents who want to hit their kids are never allowed to by the state? Can you believe <laughs> right, that? Exactly. Never. <laughs> not once. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, the wording that's not insane about what's actually happening, one kid and one parent outweigh other parent about useful medical care is also an important piece of context. Right. That last yeah. thing. Yeah. Dads who want to cure their kids' pneumonia with maple syrup should lose in court too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, just when we thought this movie couldn't get any dumber, we get Heath's best worst. <laughs> and it's time to talk to the one, the only, Jordan B. Peterson, and he is screaming immediately. Immediately. Oh, as, coming as in my hot, notes, my like, notes are just in all caps. Lobster yeah. man. A hundred percent. Immediately. His first words out of his mouth are, you don't affirm if you're a therapist, which is so fucking funny, right? Because what he's talking about, what he's arguing with is the concept of a gender affirming therapist. And what he is also talking about is a very antiquated idea that therapists aren't supposed to affirm their clients. But is that that's how not that how works? Those two words are does being it, used. Does a therapist have to disagree with you? You on have stuff? to. That's how therapy, honestly, that might be how Jordan B. Peterson thinks therapy <laughs> works. <laughs> I feel like that's uh, pretty easy to trick him then, but okay, whatever, he's lying. And then they have to cut because he's going crazy. Yeah, reverse psychology would work really easy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we also get a really cool moment here where Jordan B. Peterson reinvents the word gender, but says temperament as though he solved the problem, which I really liked. He's like, yeah, no, I mean, some people have the temperament of another Oh, can't say gender. Some people have the temperament of a temperament, and those people <laughs> are their temper. Shit. What what was my point to me? What am I talking about? <laughs> and and he makes it like I think the the statistic he gives is like one in ten women have the temperament of men or something like that. And like if that's what like that's that's not a small number. Yeah. That would be insane if that were true. If one in 10 people were trans. That'd be a huge, that would be millions upon millions upon millions of people. <laughs> right. <laughs> and like, he also, at some point, like, he says like that the concept of being non-binary is like really, really recent. Like, it's brand new. Which, which is true. I actually invented non-binary in 2003 by accident in chemistry class while doing my math homework at the same time. Nicely done. Sure. Yeah, no, that'll do it. <laughs> oh, and this is when we get the like sad montage of different intellectual dark web people who have been banned from academia yes, or whatever. Yes, yes. We Dr. get Sarah Deborah Stockton so. for a sec. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. we get we get Deborah So who like can't do science because of the wokes or whatever. Mm. She, she has a podcast now. <laughs> it's so funny. She has the same job as us with her PhD, which made me happy. This lady is literally <laughs> telling us how silent she is while her book 
is in the Chiron. Like we're watching her be <laughs> like, right. I was silent. And then her book publication is right there underneath her fucking face. Yeah. And she could get a job with Daily Wire at any moment if, if she wanted to, for sure. Exactly. Also, Sarah Stockton comes back and is like, nobody talks to me anymore. And I was like, nice. And they got, nice. and that was it. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then of course, because you knew it was coming, Kids identify as animals and the teachers have to let them purr and meow in response to questions. <sighs> they have to. They have to. Seriously, this is just based on that one ridiculous photo of an adult in like Norway, right? And that's it. And it became this giant meme thing for the, the crazy people. Yeah. And then, yeah, we start talking about how hip and cool trans is, which is like another one of these. There's another word that they're going to avoid using, which is trans trenders that was really popular for a while. And then, sure. you know, but again, one of those things you can easily Google and you'll find all the arguments and everything and how this has been really well thoroughly discussed, but they don't want you to know that. And speaking of which, now we're going to try and show that, that that whole people or cats thing is true by talking to a wolf therian. So... For those of you who aren't aware, th this is a person who's appeared in a couple pieces of media talking about Wolftharianism, and they have also since spoken publicly about how much they regret letting themselves be sort of edited and manipulated by those pieces of media to make it seem like they believe things they don't believe and think things they don't think. And for Matt's movie, he's just like, can you show us how you talk to wolves? And they're like, no. And that's the end of the fucking interview, which rules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I'm not a furry, but I think I can speak for the whole furry community when I say Matt Walsh just needs cockwaffle. Cockwaffle syrup will save Matt. Sure. It's a doesn't this this part's not in the thing, but it's a really popular furry meme. All your furry and queer fans will get it if you don't. Nice. We're always glad to hear it. Always glad to hear it. I love that Matt Matt asks actually, he's like, can, can you like Talk to a wolf? Is it Yes, <laughs> he absolutely is pretty sure this person can talk to And our wolf there is like can I talk to a wolf in England? No, you fucking idiot. What are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry, I just, I don't know what your powers are. What did the devil <laughs> offer you? Can you tell me? And of course, now we're going to watch clips of Hollywood pushing big trans with its three movies about trans people. To be clear, the point being made right now is like, People are getting way too focused on the topic of gender and they're making toxic movies about it. Nobody, like, nobody heard the, the movie saying that in the movie about this. Nobody? Yeah, it zooms out from the movie to someone watching yeah. this movie. Shit, we did it. <laughs> A dragon's biting my tail. I don't know what happened. <laughs> One of the nefarious clips is literally just someone saying, you deserve to be here. Imagine how much of a villain you need to be to see someone speaking to one of the most highly suicidal populations on the planet, encouraging them that they deserve to be here and be like, oh, that's good. That'll let people know how dangerous they truly are. It's just, it's so, it's so upsetting. It's so upsetting. Yeah. Okay. Is this where we got, I'm going to say my, my like runner up for best worst or best best. Is this when we get <laughs> Matt Walsh's insane nightmare sequence? Insane nightmare mannequin psychosexual fugue stain? That one? Yeah. Okay, this this is look exactly that happens. Podcast listener, I am self aware, and I know, I know, I've owned it. I might use psychosexual fugue state a little too often on the air, but he does film himself in a room full of <laughs> mannequins and pink dresses, <laughs> while all the talking points of the trans people he's spoken to in this movie play. It really is a psychosexual. It's fugue literally <laughs> that. He walks through a room of mannequins. He's hearing the voices of all the people he disagrees with from his own movie. And he's staring at each mannequin like he's going to beat up the mannequin. Yeah. And then he, he snaps up from his nightmare <laughs> straight up in bed. Yeah. Did not expect to hit that one on the bingo card. Like I, I got so excited. I was like, this this is it. They're getting they're getting them back for what happened at Sears. <laughs> <laughs> the mannequin's revenge at last. So then we we have a quick scene. It doesn't really matter, but I should mention it. Matt brags to us about the time that he hung out in someone's basement so that he could go to a school board meeting and make a fool of himself <laughs> by screaming at a school board that they were child abusers and they are poison predators. I love his, the one thing he's like, they tried to muzzle me and now they're trying to muzzle me with a mask and just like, what the furry yiffing hell? Yeah. <laughs> 
does, uh, does he not know that we can speak through a mask? Because he must. The next scene is him speaking through a mask. He's so bad at it, Yelling at the school board. Okay, to be fair, though, he he is so fucking bad at it, right? He's like, oh, it keeps getting caught in his mouth. <laughs> He's somehow chewing it. Like, I look, I know that everyone who says masks are hard to breathe and talk in is just an idiot, but I think Matt Walsh might be telling the truth. I think Matt Walsh might not have the human brain power to talk through a mask. He did have a little trouble. I like that the school board gave him a, a, like a clock with a buzzer for, they were like, we technically have to give you one minute. Go, you idiot. And he starts talking and he's like, I'm going to use my whole minute. And he has thing ready and he ends a little too early and you watch him get mad at himself for not timing it all the way stupid, out. Stupid <laughs> and then he's like, Matt. and I promise you what I just said now forever is and real ever, forever. forever and ever and ever. <laughs> Nailed it. And Six, one minute, one second, I win. <laughs> then we go. We cut over to Fox News. Of course, this is uh, he has to brag about the time that he made a transphobic kids book that was on Amazon for like four whole days before it got kicked off. Because why the fuck would they allow a transphobic kids book on their website? I had managed to block this book out, and I'm so upset that I have to do it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that Matt Walsh is taking us through the greatest hits of the times he embarrassed himself and everybody associated with him, right? Because now he cuts over to the Dr. Phil episode where he just showed up as like a surprise attack against two trans people and was like, you you defend your existence to me. And they were like, yeah, this guy's an idiot and we're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, look, I don't want to give Dr. Phil credit for anything, but they did bring out an expert who was like, yeah, just to be clear, I'm the expert and that guy's an idiot. Yeah, that was fun. They, oh, this is when <laughs> this is when Matt Walsh tries to do the like preferred adjectives argument oh to my try God, to take so down good. the idea of pronouns. He's like, you can't pick your pronouns. You can't pick your prepositions. Prepositions, he actually says, which was very confusing as if somebody tricked Matt Walsh into like only referring to them as like betwixt in relation to stuff at one point. And then he got mad about that. But then he says, oh, you can't tell people to use only your preferred adjectives. So how are you going to do that with pronouns? And I was like, because pronouns are, are different adjectives, right? Yeah. It's That's like, and like, like, simple. you know, if you, you can have a preferred name, like people have, like even besides just changing your name, people have nicknames and shit that they prefer to be called by. Some people get like to be called by their middle name or, you know, there, there's obviously examples where you listen to people about what they want to be called. Yeah. yeah. Nouns. Pronouns are nouns, which are names are nouns. Yeah. yeah. He even starts to make that mistake. He's like, you don't get your own pronouns, nouns, and then realizes, oh, nouns are names and you actually do get to pick those. And he's like, I mean, adjectives, <laughs> adjectives. <laughs> and then, you know, of course, Dr. Phil being Dr. Phil is like, why don't we find like a middle ground between all this? And yeah. no, we don't nope. find middle ground. There is no acceptable middle ground between human rights and genocide. He's trying to do what he does with like divorcees. He's like, now, can't you guys be trans every other weekend? And Matt Walsh, you'll be trans every other weekend <laughs> just to sort of make it up to them. So then we get sort of a wrap up of everyone's quotes. Scott Nudrant tells everybody that if they give their kids gender affirming health care, they'll turn into an exoskeleton and that nobody knows the long term effects of hormones, which is weird because we all have those in our body. A bad dad says, uh, you know, people will say you lost your child, but I'll say I was too much of a bigot to change my mind. <laughs> and I, I got to admit, I was getting a little bummed here at this point in the movie, you know, because I was seeing all these people and all the damage they do. But then a beautiful angel in the form of Jordan B. Peterson re-entered my <laughs> screen like the screaming, whirling dervish of madness he is. <laughs> To open with, it matters because my government forced me to call people words. <laughs> Am I being detained? And they were like, okay, cut. And you're going to hurt yourself, man. <laughs> he literally says, it's like, no, I'm not doing that. I wrote in my notes, renowned intellectual Jordan Peterson, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they gave all the shills from this movie a closing statement. And they all had nothing. They all failed so badly for their big teed up closing moment. Yeah. Even bigot dad from Canada on the phone was like, mm, looks like we're losing this battle hard. Everybody hates me. Fuck. And that was the 
end of their closing statement segment. It's the best. Yeah, dad's closing statement is, yeah, my kid hates me, but at least you like me, Matt Walsh. Matt, did you hang up, Matt? (laughs) But now it's time, at last, to find out what a woman really is. Because Jordan Peterson gives us our most insane answer. He says, marry one and find out. So Matt Walsh goes to his kitchen and he asks his wife, what is a woman? And she says, an, an adult, adult human, human female, female who needs help with this pickle jar. It's the end of the fucking movie. And this, this just crushed me because I, I'm autistic and like pickles in particular, they set off my sensory sensitivity. I can't even be in the same room as an open pickle jar. Oh, no. I don't know if I can open a pickle jar. I literally don't know. I can't know. You'll never know. I'll never know if I'm a woman. Should we even be opening pickle jars in general is a great question. I agree. Will the population die out if we keep all the pickle jars closed because we'll only have <laughs> men in our existence? <laughs> all right. Well, um... That's the end of the fucking movie. That is the end of the fucking movie. One question before we wrap it up. What word should Matt Walsh learn about in his next movie? What do you think? What is a blank? Uh, Well, based on what I think he's going to experience on the children that he doxxed for this movie, I think uh, slander. Slander might be a good one for him to learn. What is a slander? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right, I think that's going to do it for What is a Woman? But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we found another terrible movie for next week. Eli, what's on deck? Well, Heath, after this pile of shit, I think we all deserve some actual beautiful cinema. So we're going to take a trip to the movies, but not just any movie. I think we deserve singing and dancing Antonio Banderas. That's right. What? We'll be watching the new musical version of The Birth of Christ Story. (laughs) Journey to Bethlehem. Hold on, it's a musical? It's a motherfucking musical, Heath. Oh, we're going to the theater. No fair. You made me watch this. (laughs) (laughs) All right. That is exciting. With that very exciting news, we're going to bring episode 430 to a merciful close. Trinity, thank you so much for joining us. It was great. Thank you so much for having me on. Fantastic time. And of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Our theme song is written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Eagle Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Trinity and Eli, I'm Heath, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. The Brotherhood of Sears Mannequins still seeks revenge on Matt Walsh. They're watching. <laughs> Waking. Jordan Peterson continued allowing Dorian Gray to stay young and happy. Matt Walsh never learned what a woman is, and women prefer it that way. Yes. I was so happy when I read that. (laughs) He's so stupid, it's hard to make jokes about. Yeah. Yeah. I found it. Wait. You found it. To see his answer to a question. You'll see it. We'll talk about it in the first thing, but there are a bunch of moments in the first third where I make a joke and then he lives the joke. And I was just like, okay, well, I don't know. Well, what am I doing here? Fuck me then. You guys just want to watch this movie? Have a good time? All right, Trinity. Uh, that's the last of the sketches. You ready to finish up the podcast? We'll do the final third of the movie. Do, do we have another ad? We might, yeah. Um, it's actually the first line of the script for that ad is, all right, oh, Trinity, I- that's the last of the sketches. Do you want to finish up the <laughs> podcast and do the third of the movie? <laughs> this is all part of the script. It's like this, this nested all, thing all, that Eli predicted, we're doing and now we're still rolling. Yeah. This is the, <laughs> this Philip is the sketch Hoffman right now. Is here. All right, there's a lot. <laughs> oh, he's dead outside of the parentheses if you're going yeah, back. Yeah, but inside the parentheses. Yeah. <laughs>
The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. If you're not a CareSource member, this is your chance to choose CareSource. Over a million Ohio Medicaid members can't be wrong. It's your Medicaid. It's your choice. So choose the plan Ohioans trust. CareSource. Enroll now at CareSource.com. CareSource gives you so much more than health insurance. Over 1 million Ohio Medicaid members can't be wrong. So choose the plan Ohioans trust. CareSource. It's your Medicaid. It's your choice. Enroll now at CareSource.com.